So now we've talked about two kinds of rates of change. We have the average rate of change, which is like f of b minus f of a over b minus a, or you can see this definition here, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And that's, we can compute that for any function for which we can compute the two values. There's no calculus involved. Notice there's no limit. So that means that h could never be zero. That's the one limitation if, we have, if we're not going to use the limit. We have also talked now about instantaneous rate of change, which we sometimes call the derivative. So the difference here is we're going to take the limit as that h value goes towards zero. So f prime of x, we know this formula now. Now the interesting thing is, this doesn't have to be a position velocity acceleration function to work. We can take the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change, of any function. So here's an example. Imagine a tree growing in the forest. If we were to cut the tree trunk, what we would look at would look like a circle, right? So the face, the surface area of that tree trunk, if it were the tree were cut down, would look like a circle. And we can talk about the rate at which the area of that circle changes. So we know a formula A equals pi r squared. I want to talk about the rate at which the area is changing. I want to find the instantaneous rate of change. Now in the last section, and in the last chapter, I would have made you take the limit as h went to zero of a of r plus h minus a of r all over h. And it would have been a lot of work. But now we know the shortcut. So recognize that now r is our variable. We've been using x. Pi is a constant, so the constant multiple rule applies. So if I want to find the derivative of a with respect to r, the 2 exponent comes to the front to multiply. The pi that's there is already a constant that's multiplying. My new exponent on r is 1 less, and I get dA dr equals 2 times pi times r. I would call this the instantaneous rate of change of the area with respect to the radius. Or I could call it the derivative of r, I'm sorry, the derivative of a with respect to r. So now I could go on to ask this next question. What is the rate of change of the area of the cross section of the tree trunk when the radius of the tree trunk is exactly 4 feet? Well, I would need the derivative, which I already have. I already have an expression for the derivative that I found in that last slide. And all I'd need to do now is plug in the value for the radius. So I know I want to use 2 times pi times r. Now I know that r should be exactly 4 feet. I get 2 times pi times 4, which is 8 pi. So notice this notation, if you will. I could have said, instead of writing dA dr, I could have written a prime equals 2 pi r. So I could have said a prime of 4. That means the a prime function with 4 plugged in is 2 times pi times 4. Here, this is another notation, the dA dr notation. Just notice if I know I want to plug in 4 for r, it's not a function notation. I don't have a set of parentheses where I could plug in that r value. I use this vertical line with a little notation that I'm going to set r equal to 4. So I call this dA dr evaluated at r equals 4. So that's my dA dr with 4 plugged in for r, and I get 8 pi.